Hey guys, how's it going? Oscar here, back with the video. Sorry I've been gone for so long. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff going on, a lot of moving parts, and some moving into this new place. Getting the studio set up, you can see the, uh, the acoustic treatment behind me. Um, I'll do a little video tour um, in the next video, but I just wanted to come back with a tutorial just to get you guys, um, just let you guys know that I'm back into doing this. In this video, I'm just going to be showing you um, a little low end trick that I've figured out in my time off. Uh, I've been working on this track. Uh, that's good. Well, I haven't spoken to the guys at the label yet, but basically, um, this uh, I hope this track's gonna be coming out in September. Uh, let me just play it from like you know the beginning of like where I've got it like made so far, and then um, I'll go into how I've rooted the sub bass and how I've got it sounding the way that it does and tight and articulate. And yeah, let's, uh, let's go on with this. Yeah, uh, that's the track so far. I just need to write an intro for it and stuff, but uh, let's um into the low end thing. So all of these tracks that are in purple, I've got these rooted to this red channel, the, the sub bus. Uh, so all of these purple tracks, like the, the lighter sort of purple, not the lilac colored ones, they're all rooting to, to this track in the, uh, called the sub bus. And basically, because I've got loads of different um, different sub basses going on with different tones for different basses. Like some are using just regular sine waves, which is like slightly saturated. Some, some of them are using like low pass squares or low pass uh, triangle waves just to like have different tones underneath those basses. You know, when, it, when, you're, when you have that many different subs going on, it's, uh, it's quite easy to, you know, get the levels like mismatched or, you know, it might not have, um, you know, some, some of them might be coming across a bit too strong and you might not have level matched them like correctly. As you can see here along the side, a lot of my bases are just like hitting zero and I'm like doing the gain staging within, um, within some of the plugins to like sort of level them out right. And same with the subs. Like the way that I'm, I'm keeping it dynamic and uh, but keeping it relatively at the same level is by using the sub bus. And the sub bus, basically I've got two different things set up. So I'm going to go through it with, uh, with plugins and then I'm going to redo it in Ableton stock just so that you guys can see my process with my third party plugins. You know, if you guys don't have them, then you can do it the stock method. So with the third party plugins, basically what I'm doing with these first two plugins, uh, I've got a utility and a VU meter because I'm running into a Pulsec EQ, which is a, um, a analog emulation of a, of a valve based EQ. You know, when you run into these plugins, you want to make sure that you're hitting zero VU so that you get the right tone out of the, the vintage emulation plugin. Uh, so I just basically like run the track through pulled it down by the amount that I needed for it to hit zero, zero VU. If, uh, if I jump back in here. So it's actually going a little bit over. So if I bring that down a little bit. There we go. So now that that's hitting zero VU, I can, um, the, the, the Pulse EQ should be able to, you know, output in the right way. Because if you run into it too hot, you could get some distortion out of it, or it might not get the right tone, or it might not work properly. Like to get the best, like I read the the instructions on a lot of the Waves plugins, and you know most of them are the same. If you run into them at zero VU, then you tend to get a, a better tone out of it. Yeah, the, basically the reason why I'm using a Pulsec EQ rather than a regular EQ is due to the Pulsec low end trick. Now, what that is doing basically, if I could, well, I'll, I'll leave a video in the description of the, of of, um, of this one to just sort of explain it properly. But basically. A Pulse EQ is um, is a two band. I think it's a two band EQ. 
Yeah. So you select the frequencies and it's got a boost or an attenuate. And basically the, um, the, boost, the boost portion of the EQ, even though you're setting the frequency at the same, at like, you know, 60 hertz or 30 hertz or 100 hertz, wherever the, the, the selector is, the boost and the attenuation points are set at different frequencies around this, the target frequency that you set. So when you boost um, in one section and you attenuate at the same time, it's not fighting on the same band. It's actually two different areas. So you'll be boosting on your low end and then dipping, like, you know, you'll be like dipping uh, another area around this 60 hertz point. So I've got my, all of my subs running into this and I'm, I'm boosting the low end and attenuating it around the 60 hertz region. So anything below 60 hertz is getting a nice boost. And anything around the 60 hertz mark and, and above, like just above, is is getting attenuated. And this like low end trick is used in, you know, it's it's been around for years, pretty much since the pulse has been been introduced. And you you'll have to look into like the way that the the pulse set works. But basically, you can um, you can add more tone uh, using a pulse EQ because of the valves that are built into it. So there's a, a valve circuit that's based on the boost. There's a valve circuit that's based on the attenuator. And there's also a valve circuit based on the output stage as well. So if you were to boost the output stage by a couple dB, you'd also get some more tube action on the back end of that. But I didn't really think this track needed it, so I just I've left the uh, the gain at zero. The EQ8 is just um, it's rounding off some of those harmonics at the, on the end. So because you know when when you introduce uh, valve circuitry, you're you're adding harmonics. And then I'm just using a, a multiband basically to. Um, to clamp down on all the frequencies, so like a multiband compressor is just a compressor that you can split up into bands and uh, basically I've just set it from 150 hertz down to quite aggressively like you know clamp down on some of those frequencies because some of the subs are, are quite a bit louder than others and then whenever you're um, whenever you're compressing basically you're you're reducing the audio the, the output so I've just uh, added a little shelf of 2 dB to just sort of bring it back to the point where I wanted it to be at so everything, all the sub-bases that are running through this chain are, you know, they're having this valve, valve EQ sort of sound pumped through it and then rounded off, gone into this multiband and the multiband is just um, clamping down on all those subs that are being run through it. And, you know, you can see that in action now if I hit play. I don't know if you, if I, um, there we go. And then without it, if I, um, if I turn up the compression, it's just a bit warmer. But it's due to the saturation and stuff that's coming through the um, the, the EQ, and then uh, the multiband is just sort of ta taking those peaks and just keeping them keeping them under control. Because Ableton doesn't have have a a pulse -like EQ, but it has um, an EQ that act, that that colours when you boost, which is the channel EQ. What I, what I forgot to mention as well, actually, is uh, this pulse -like EQ is uh, is a, is the mono version. So I'm whatever stereo information might be in any of the subs, I'm just pulling that down to mono just to keep things really nice and tight in the low end so that it's, it's mono compatible. And then um, in this, uh, the stock version, basically I've just put a utility on here to mono the bass. Uh, I, I couldn't really tell the difference in terms of putting things into zero VU on, on the Ableton stuff. I, I think it was designed so that you don't have to go through that. So I, I, I didn't bother, it didn't really change the sound all that much. So I didn't bother gain staging before going into this, but you know, you're more than welcome to give it a go. Like leading into uh, your, you know, your project. I've just got a spectrum on here just to analyze what's going on in this, just so I can see where the um, where the fundamentals sitting in terms of volume. Basically, you can set this up by selecting the ranges and then making sure that it's not dynamic in this bottom corner here. Uh, let me make this a bit bigger. So yeah, I've got basically what I'm doing is boosting with the channel EQ to add the harmonics that I wanted and. Um, yeah, done the same thing with an EQ8, set that down to just to round off the uh, the harmonics that are being added by the EQ. The, the, this EQ adds a lot less harmonics, but it still, it still changes the tone 
And then I've got a multi-band compressor, which is soloed on the low ends at 150 hertz, similar to the, um, the FabFilt one that I had set up. Uh, it's got the same ratios and all that. You want to, um, if you want to copy these, these settings, I've got a 4 to 1 ratio at minus 18 dB. Um, I'm not doing anything in terms of the, um, you know, the upwards compression, so we're leaving that down. And then the thresholds are set to 100 milliseconds attack and 300, second, 300 milliseconds of release. But it's set on a soft knee, and um, yeah, and then basically I'm clamping down on those frequencies pretty hard, and then I'm giving a two dB boost at the end, um, and then after that, because um, I'm, I'm just giving the over the overall thing a boost with a utility because of this gain stage that's going on here. It's you know, just to bring everything up because I've reduced this by minus six on this EQ before running into my multi band, so I gave it another boost at uh, plus six just to make sure that it wasn't running into the compressor too hard. And yeah, then I'm just using a, uh, a, sh a scope on the end just to sort of see if it was making any of a difference, but I couldn't really see uh, all that much. So this is the this is the sub being run through on the stock one, and then if I so there's definitely a bit more of a tone there with the third party ones. Like if you can get a Pulse EQ to be able to do this uh, Pulse low end trick, I'd, I'd highly recommend it. I've been using it on all my tracks recently. I use it on kicks. I use it on basses, um, anything with a lot of low, low signal. It's also great for boosting highs. Like I, I always used to preach on about using the channel EQ to, if I wanted to make a high shelf boost. And now I've been using this Pulse to to add like sparkly highs and, um, to have a bit more of a uh, a tubey sound put into it, I, th I think I think that's all of, all I'm gonna go into in this video. If you want to have any like breakdowns of the bases that I made in this video, it's quite interesting. Um, you know, especially this one down here. The uh... <laughs> you know that was that base was originally um, a drum loop that I uh, that I processed. So yeah, if you want to see see something like that then um you know let me know in the comment section down below before i end the video i just want to talk about the patreon so i'm going to be doing a bit of a restructure with it there's going to be uh some changes in the tiers and stuff and like how i'm how i'm doing the videos because basically i'm going back to work pretty soon and i'm not going to have time to be doing these videos all the time i'm, I'm aiming to do like a video a week and keep on top of the podcast as well and keep those coming every month the patreon is basically just going to be set up now so that if you want to do private lessons with me i'll be doing that and then I'll just have a support here if you want to support me. I just thought I'd let you guys know about that. Go check out the Patreon, links are in the description below. Um, if you want to hear more music from me that's up, up and coming, check out my, uh, my Instagram. That'll be down in the description as well. Uh, I, I, I release a lot of stuff, just you know, pictures of um, you know, the, the studio set up as, as building it. Um, that'll be up there. Uh, I'm going to do a, vid a video on um, how I did this room as well. I'll, I'll give you a quick tour. Yeah, as you can see, I've got um, big, big, thick, you know, like 15, 15 centimeters or like uh, six inch, six, like six inch deep bass traps. Um, I've got them on the side walls, on the back wall. And on the roof, I've got a, um, a cloud that pretty much stems the entire room. It's extremely dead in here now, which is nice. Um, and, you know, you've got the, uh, the setup down there. I've got some, got some new speakers, the, um, the A77Xs, they're insane. <laughs> I really don't need a sub with them. And, uh, you know, those speakers in the combination with this room, it's just like, it's really nice, the sound in here. If you want to see more videos from me, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, the bell, um, next, to the, uh, next to the subscribe button if you want to stay notified on when I'm coming out with new videos. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.